Batman and Robin sucks. There's no denying it. Uh, let's, let's get through this as fast as we can. Did, believe it or not, did, I do got some positives I, got, I have to say about this movie. Positive number one, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze. The one person everybody mocks and makes fun of, he's actually the best part of this movie. I think Arnold is hilarious as Mr. Freeze. And you can tell the man is just having a ball. He looks like a kid in a candy store in this movie playing this role. Arnold brings this, gives so much life to this movie, he's literally the only watchable thing. Not only that, his performance is so mocked that his dialogue is now in pop culture. Everywhere you go, people are doing Mr. Freeze memes or quoting him in this movie. The one person everyone thinks sucks is the one person everyone has accepted into their life. Mr. Freeze forever, Arnold forever. Positive number two. Michael Goh as Alfred. Michael Goh reprises his role as Alfred for the final time after having, played, after having played him previously in the last three films. <clears throat> I actually like Alfred in this movie. I like the little subplot they were given Alfred. It doesn't have a good payoff. But I like the whole subplot of Alfred being sick and Bruce having to come to terms with it. Of course, if this movie was written more seriously, this, the theme of this movie should have been about family and loss and Alfred should have died. It would have made Bruce a stronger character by the end of it. But, no. Status quo is returned and Alfred survives. Lame. Stupid. This movie... This movie doesn't even try. This movie sucks. This movie's terrible. I'll give credit where credit is due. As Bruce Wayne, George Clooney is not that bad. And I actually like the scenes with him and Alfred. I think they're... I think together they put on... They have a very good chemistry. And their performances are actually really sincere and earnest. And I can actually feel... That the love that Bruce Wayne has for Alfred, and I can see the sadness, and I think George Clooney, believe it or not, did a decent job as Bruce Wayne. He's got that billionaire playboy look to him, and like I said, I think his scenes with Alfred is probably the best stuff in this movie. Well, his best stuff in this movie. Well, oh, don't get me started on him as Batman, I'll get to that soon. Another positive, I like the over-the-top special effects, I like the over-the-top production design. This movie is Dick Sprang and Adam West Batman on steroids. This looks like a pop art comic book come to life. Joel Schumacher, I give you credit for at least making this movie look visually pleasing. Good job there, buddy. I respect you, Mr. Schumacher. Now let's get to the negatives. Bane. The man who broke the bat is Poison Ivy's chauffeur, and he wears a monkey suit. Why do people hate Bane? Why can't... You write Bane to be awesome. In this movie, he's a bum. In The Dark Knight Rises, you got it right, and then you gave him a weak payoff. Instead of having Batman do the final blow, you have Bane go out like a punk bitch in Dark Knight, in Dark Knight Rises because of Catwoman. I want someone to tell me why Bane gets so disrespected in movies. In this movie, he's disrespected. In The Dark Knight Rises, he's, he's also disrespected because his payoff is abysmally bad. Speaking of Poison Ivy, Uma Thurman. As Poison Ivy, she's hot as hell. When she's acting, she's dreadful. In Pulp Fiction, she was awesome. In Kill Bill, she was a badass. In this, I want to put her on mute because she's terrible. She looks fucking outstanding, but her acting is atrocious. Speaking of atrocious, Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl. I thought Barbara was uh, Jim Gordon's daughter. Instead, she's Alfred's niece and she serves no purpose to this movie. Moving on, George Clooney as Batman. Bat credit card is all you need to know when George Clooney is Batman. Bat credit card. That's all you need to know. So yeah, that's it. I got nothing else. This movie gets a 4 out of 10. Yeah, I... I would watch Batman and Robin over Superman 4 or Quest for Peace any, any day of the week. At least to me, Batman and Robin is much more, much, much more watchable and much more entertaining because Quest for Peace is terrible. And yes, their Batman and Robin is not the worst superhero movie ever made. It's the worst Batman movie ever made, but the worst superhero movie ever made has to go to Quest for Peace because that movie has no business being that bad. Batman and Robin sucks, but at least it's entertainingly bad. And you can actually get some enjoyment out of this movie. Believe it or not. So yeah, 4 out of 10 for Batman and Robin. If you are like me and hate this movie but found some enjoyment out of it, let me know down below. If you're one of those people who wants to defend Batman and Robin, please, please defend this movie and I'll give you a cookie.
like this video and subscribe and i'll check you back next time for more